Hello and welcome to another CloudWords video. My name is Mauricio and today I'll teach you how to send large files over the internet. Now sending small files is basically no brainer. You just drag and drop them into your preferred chat app or email client and most will let you do it. But most of those apps have a file size limit. So what happens when you need to send a file that's a gigabyte or larger? Well, the best way is to use something called cloud storage. If you're unfamiliar, we'll explain what it is in a minute. But first, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon if you want to know more helpful content like this video. Now, let's jump right in and solve your problem. Cloud storage is software that lets you store files online without them taking up space on your device. This is obviously useful for helping you save hard drive space, but cloud storage does a lot of neat things like letting you share uploaded files easily. Of course, there are like other ways to share files besides cloud storage, but none of them give you the kind of access control that cloud storage does. You'll see what I mean in a bit when we talk about sharing permissions, but still, I'll mention a few other ways to share files near the end of this video. So now let's get started with how to share files using cloud storage. Okay, now let's move on to the steps so you can start sharing your large files as soon as possible. I'll use sync.com as an example for this video because it's the best for sharing, but you can use any cloud storage service you like. So first you need to create an account. Easy enough, just head over to the provider's website and sign up for an account. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Enter your details and you should be good to go. Most cloud services give you a few gigs of storage for free, but that might not be enough if you need to share a lot of large files. You can check out our guide on cloud storage pricing if you wanna make an informed purchase. Well, the link is just in the description box below as well. Anyway, now that your account is set up, you can get to uploading. That's as easy as dragging and dropping your files into the web interface. So open up the website and drop your files anywhere in the blank space. Once your file is uploaded, click on the share button next to the file name. Usually you'll be able to share your file as a link or email it directly to people. Either way, you should be able to set certain permissions. If you don't want to set permissions, all you need to do is copy the link and send it over to whoever you want to share it with. Now, that's fine if the file doesn't contain any sensitive data, but if it's something you need to share privately, then you'll need to set permissions for your shared file. Stick around for a guide on how to do just that. So setting permissions will vary between providers, but most of them offer the same kind of permissions if they have them at all. Again, I'll use sync.com as an example because it has a ton of permissions and settings for sharing, but keep in mind that most providers might only offer one or two of these features. I'll go through these permissions and options one by one so you have a like broad idea of what they do and how you might set them up. The first thing to look for is password protection. By setting a password, you can make sure that your file can't be accessed by someone unintended. But you also might not want to keep the link active forever. For example, if you're giving access to someone who you're collaborating with temporarily, you don't want them to be able to open up the file after you're done collaborating and potentially abuse it or do some other things with it. That's where expiry dates come in handy. Basically, if you set an expiration date for a link, the link will no longer work past that time period. Alternatively, you can also set a download limit to make sure your file isn't shared with other people. You can also choose if you want people to only view your shared file or you can let them download it as well. Some cloud services also let you set editors for links so that you can collaborate on shared files and folders. Some will even let um, others comment on your files for an even easier collaboration. That's pretty much all the major sharing options and permissions you'll see. Of course, there's gonna be provider specific options like sync.com access and download notifications or Mega's private encryption keys for links, but most providers will only give you a limited range of these features. And if you wanna uh, head over to cloudwords.net, there are like 50 cloud storage services that you can check out and we've reviewed each and every one of them. 
You can't easily do with most email providers, at least not large files. Gmail lets you send large files as Google Drive links. Google Drive is Google's own cloud storage service, in case you weren't aware. If you upload a file via Gmail, it'll go to your Google, Google Drive storage and send as an email attachment. The downside is that you can't set any sharing permissions or options for the link like you would normally be able to do. So what other ways are there to send large files um, on the internet? For example, if you don't want to use cloud storage. Well, there's another option, and that's to use a file transfer service like WeTransfer. WeTransfer and similar services let you upload a file and they'll generate a sharing link for you. These services usually come with some limitations though, at least on the free plan. For example, WeTransfer only lets you send up to 2 gigabytes per month, though you can increase that limit up to 200 gigabytes by going pro, i.e. paying for the service. The other issue is that these kinds of services don't let you set permissions, though they aren't as secure or useful if you need to collaborate on large files. So that's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please give the video a like to help us with the YouTube algorithm gods. If you want to see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release a new video. Again, if you want to um, access the providers or things that I mentioned in this video, click on the description box. I leave all the links there and it'll take you right to cloudwords.net or directly to the provider's website. And if you want to leave a comment, we'll be happy to review each and every one of them and uh, hopefully get some feedback for our next videos. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.